Welcome to Electron Line, and in order to understand the, hmm, what are we trying to understand here? Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Electron Line, and in order to understand the differential form of Gauss's law a little bit better, we're going to do an example here of a cylindrical charge object. So assume that the cylinder here is full of charge with equal distribution of charge, therefore the density is the same everywhere, at least the charge density is the same everywhere. And just to get a feel of how we then express a charge density, we use the letter rho for that. It's equal to the charge inside divided by the volume. Now if we're just going to consider this small little segment inside the cylinder, because we want to figure out what the electric field strength is right there, not at the very edge of the cylinder, but somewhere inside the cylinder, we only want to consider the charge within the Gaussian surface. And so we can say that the the charge inside the Gaussian surface divided by the volume is equal to Q divided by pi A square L, where A is the radius of the Gaussian surface. So pi A square is the surface of the, the top surface right here, and of course L would be the length. We're just going to consider a segment of it long enough so we can ignore the edge effects. All right. Also, the differential form of Gauss's law says that the Divergence of electric field is equal to the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught. Charge density again defined by this equation right there. So what we're going to do is to show that these equations are equivalent. We're going to take the divergence of the electric field, but first we need to know what the electric field is. And to do that, we're going to use the uh, integral form of the equation to find the electric field at this particular point right there. So here we can say that the integral the surface integral of E dot dA is equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Okay, E dot dA. So the electric field is what we're trying to find. So we're now we're going to multiply that by the surface of the cylinder. We're going to ignore the ends because we, ignore, we feel that that's, uh, this is kind of an infinitely long cylinder in respect to the diameter or in respect to the, uh, respect to the radius. And so what we're going to do is just find the surface area of the, of the Gaussian surface on the sides of the cylinder, not at the very tops. So in that case, this becomes the strength of the electric field times the surface area, which would be the, the circumference, 2 pi r, or in this case, 2 pi a, times the length. That would be 2 pi a times the length. That would be the surface of that Gaussian surface inside, or the surface area, I should say, of the Gaussian surface inside, and that then equals Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Okay, therefore, to find the electric field strength, we can say that E, therefore, is equal to Q inside divided by 2 pi A L times epsilon sub naught. So now we have the electric field strength at this location inside the cylinder. It's dependent upon, of course, variable A. As A gets bigger, uh, we can see that the electric field then, wow, would get smaller. That's kind of interesting, an interesting relationship. Right. Now, a better form of this would be to replace Q inside in terms of the charge density. So if we then say from this, we can say that the Q inside is equal to the charge density times pi a square l and replace q inside by that we get the following equation so e is equal to the density of the charge times pi a square l divided by 2 pi a l epsilon sub naught notice that makes things a lot simpler because now the l's cancel out the pi's cancel out one of the a's cancel out and in simple form then the electric field strength will be equal to the density times A divided by 2 epsilon sub naught. So that's a lot better form of the equation because now we realize that the electric field strength does indeed depend linearly on the value A, meaning the distance from the center or of the cylinder to whatever point we want to consider the electric field strength at. So we then take that and plug it in here to take the divergence of the electric field. Now, in cylindrical coordinates, this is the divergence of the electric field. However, before you panic and go, wow, how am I going to do that? Realizing that there's no dependency in the Z direction, the electric field strength does not vary in the Z direction. So when we take the partial derivative with respect to Z, we get zero. 
The electric field also does not depend on the angle, the circumference angle, so to speak, that would be phi. So in any direction like this, the electric field strength would be the same as it, at an equal distance A away from the center. So there's no dependency on the angle. So we only have to worry about this portion of the equation to find the diversion of the electric field. So now what we need to do is, since the electric field right here does have a dependency on the radius, we can take this here and plug it in over there. Now instead of R, we can use A or we can use R, whatever we, we like, but since we use A in the drawing there, let's go ahead and use A in here as well. So we now can say that the divergence of the electric field in the radial direction is equal to 1 over A times the partial derivative with respect to A times A or of A times the electric field, which is the density, the charge density times A divided by 2 epsilon sub naught. Notice, let's take out everything that's not a variable. Uh, that doesn't change with respect to A. That leaves us an A squared in there. So this would be 1 over, oh, not 1, because I'm going to factor out the rho. So the charge density divided by 2 epsilon sub naught A. Now don't put the A in here. That was a special way of writing this so we could take the divergence times the divergence or times the, in this case, the partial derivative of A squared. All right. So now we go ahead and do that. So this is equal to uh, charge density times 2a, because that's the derivative of a squared, divided by 2 epsilon sub naught times a. Hmm, interesting. a's cancel out. The 2's cancel out. And notice that the divergence of the electric field at the distance a is going to be equal to charge density divided by epsilon sub naught which, by the way, is what we expect to find because notice that, in this case, we know that the diversions of the electric field must equal the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught, which is exactly what we found when we use the integral form of the Gauss's equation or Gauss's law to find the electric field. We then take the diversion of that in solidical coordinates, and sure enough, we can show that that equals the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught. So again, Notice that this is just another valid form, mathematical form, of Gauss's law. In this case, it's a differential form of Gauss's law, and it works for cylindrical charge densities as well.